Hey, welcome back everyone to the EMF protection course and today is the day we're going to learn how to use all the EMF meters that you're going to need. Do you even know what the most harmful EMF or microwave radiation is at your home? Oh my god, don't ever, ever, ever do that. Oh, I got a text. Oh, I'm on the oh internet. Oh my gosh. Do I need to be taller? Yes. Oh, much better. Oh, look at it. That's our intro. <laughs> You can't call it an intro if you say intro. So if you want or choose to buy your own meters to test EMF in your house, in your family's homes, and friends' homes, you really need about three different meters. Ideally, there are more meters you can get to test body voltage and other things that get a little more technical. But just to go around your house and see what you've got in your house and where major problems and issues may be, you really just need these three meters. So we're gonna start with the most familiar meter. This is called the Acousticom 2. And this is a meter to check microwave radiation. So cell phone, Bluetooth, and your um, cell towers that are coming into your house and your Wi-Fi. And all you do is this is gonna tell you the volts per meter. So the radiation kind of hitting this surface. And we're gonna turn it on. When you turn it on with one click, you'll see that it kind of bounces back and forth as a cell tower and our Wi-Fi gives off some wiring. So I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to show you what the lights look like. If I turn it, double click it. So now it's turned on. I'm going to turn it on one more time and you can hear the radiation. I'm going to come over there for a second. So when I first turn this on, you're going to see the numbers go up here and you can kind of see it's bouncing into this yellow and orange, yellow and orange. So red being extreme yellow and orange being okay, and then green being ideal. So there's a little bit of Wi-Fi signal from our Wi-Fi router that's still on. And there's some cell tower that's coming in here, but it's really not very bad. It can get much worse than this. If I click this again, now you can hear the sound of the microwave. So if you wanna hear this, now you hear whenever the cell tower or the, or the Wi-Fi pings a device, you'll hear it you know, increase. I'm gonna turn that off. Run back over here. So what you want to do is you want to just walk around your house with this meter and, and just go slow and see where the radiation gets really high on the meter. Are there certain areas of your house, I always recommend you do your bedroom, that it gets higher than others. Definitely do your bedroom and the places you spend the most amount of time. I would recommend you first do it with your Wi-Fi on, your cell phone's on airplane mode, so you're not picking up signals from the cell phone, and then you do it with the Wi-Fi off and check again and make sure all the Wi-Fi is off. For example, my printer can be connected wirelessly. So anytime my printer is on, it's giving off a pretty strong Wi-Fi signal. You might wanna check all the Wi-Fi devices and microwave devices that could be in your house and turn them off for the second time you go through. And then you can get a good reading of your neighbor's Wi-Fi and the cell tower and see really how dangerous your home is or is not without any signal coming from in your house. So that's really important to do that. So I'm going to show you real quick what happens and how we check with this meter. So I'm going to grab my cell phone and I'm going to have the meter here on sound. You can, well, it's going to be, we're going to turn the airplane mode off the phone and we're going to see the meter kind of peg out here. So now it's at very extreme levels of radiation and I'm holding it. That's probably not a great idea, but that gives you an idea of what you're looking for. <coughs> So this is back on airplane mode. So you're looking for where these meters spike and go into the red or just where if there's higher microwave radiation in your home, there might be areas that have higher than others. Then once you do that, you can figure out how to mitigate those areas. So that's just gonna tell you microwave radiation in your home. The next thing you might wanna do is electric fields. So this is called the ME3030B. It's an electric and magnetic meter, but it's really designed to do electric really well and then I have a separate magnetic meter. So you can do both with this. The ideal is you take this grounding cord and you plug the grounding cord into the meter and then you would clip this alligator clip to something that's grounded and it could be the outlet ground of the wall depending on how this is set up or ideally it's on a copper rod that's shoved into the ground outside and this grounds directly to the copper rod that's in the ground outside because you can trust that as the best ground. Once it's grounded, you can walk around, this is a really, really long cord, probably about 100 feet, and you can walk all the way around your house, checking different rooms, checking different walls. So what you wanna do, so I've got a little electric teapot here, and I'm gonna turn on the meter, we can turn on with sound and without sound. 
You may or may not be able to hear this or see this, but right now we're at about, um, when I'm touching it, about 261 volts per meter we're reading. And if I go just a little bit away, we drop down to 100 volts per meter. You really wanna be under 100 volts per meter. So this is turned off. Now when I turn it on, it goes from that 100, now it's up to, uh, it went up to 550 volts per meter. Now it's kind of staying around 400, 397 to 400 volts per meter. So let me see if I can get to show you a little bit closer. Okay. All right, so now you can see it's about 20 or 30 volts per meter. I'm gonna turn it on. And you can see that go way up. It's at 600 volts per meter and climbing. And then it's about steadies out. I'm gonna turn it back off. So you can see that you can take this electric meter and go around your house. What I would recommend you do is go near the light switches, turn them on and off and see if it goes up when it's around the light switches. Go around the, the walls, and we'll do this in a second, the walls above and, and on the side of your bed where your head goes and see if there's a big electric field coming from the wall where the wiring is running by your head of your bed. And then you can know that there are ways to mitigate that, like turning off the power at the circuit breaker to your bedroom. Not ideal, but that's what a lot of people actually do to make sure there's no electric and magnetic fields in their bedroom whatsoever. So we're gonna show you how to do that real quick. And then the last one is the magnetic meter. So this is a milligauss meter and it's from Alpha Labs. It's an AC milligauss meter. It's uh, UHS-2, I'm gonna show this to you. So this is the milligauss meter here. You turn it on to three axis and it'll read our background. So our background, uh, magnetic field is 0 0.94 milligauss. The safest magnetic field is 0 0.5 milligauss and below. So ideally we would want our house and especially where we sleep to be less than 0 0.5. 0 0.9 isn't bad, but it's still not ideal. Then what you would do is you would take this, you would take this meter around your house and you would check the magnetic field. Now when you move with this, there's gonna be electric fields you're gonna cross and it'll, it'll really, the numbers will move all over the place while you're moving. So you wanna sit in one spot for a few seconds with this meter not moving in order to check the field. If you're moving, the field numbers will fluctuate so wildly you won't get a good reading. So you've moved to different places of your house. I would recommend checking your refrigerator, your stove, and where you have water pipes. We found major magnetic fields anywhere that we had water pipes. Everybody grounds their electricity by code to the water pipes and everyone with bad wiring or miswired homes is now feeding energy onto the water pipes and a major electric and magnetic field was coming out of our water pipe and we had to fix that. There's a way to fix that if that's happening to you. So go around your house, see where there's high magnetic fields and if there's fields that are higher than 0.5, that's not good. You want it below 0.5, 0 0.5 milligauss. But if there's fields that are very high. We found some that were 50 to 70 milligauss, which is extremely dangerous magnetic fields. Those are very high. And that was from our water pipe from everyone grounding. And so we had to take care of those fields. I believe very high magnetic fields are associated with childhood like leukemia. And that's usually what you get from high tension power lines are very large magnetic fields coming underneath those power lines and high incidences of leukemia under those based on the research that I've seen online. So you do want to make sure that you have low magnetic fields and anywhere you have high magnetic fields, you might want to figure out how you could reduce those. So those are the three meters. We're going to do a real quick um, bedroom tour of just one wall of the bedroom to show you how you would check the wall where your head goes or any place where your bed touches a wall to make sure that it is low EMF. You're going to go around the house with these meters. You're going to check and see where the, the highest EMF is and then check your bedroom and see what the EMF levels are in your bedroom. Then you're gonna to try to figure out how you might mitigate the areas that are the highest. That's how you go around and use these meters. They're very simple to use, but then understanding what levels are safe is something that we'll link you to here in the end of the email. Thank you.